The third day of Book One saw two further 1.2 million guinea lots through the ring to add to a list of 14 to sell for seven figures across the three days, concluding a sale which saw record turnover and the most expensive yearling sold anywhere in the world this year. It was Newsels Park Stud who ended the week as the sale's leading consigners, having sold a total of 18 lots for over 11 million guineas. And on the final day, they added a third million guinea lot to their tally in the form of a Dubawi filly out of Giants Play, who sold to Stroud Coleman Bloodstock for 1.2 million guineas. Uh, well, we got involved with the family some years ago. John Warren actually bought um, the dam as a yearling and we raced her successfully. She was firstly with Sir Michael Stout and latterly went to America. She was a grade two winner over there. Um, she's had a few foals for us and they've done well. We like the idea of Dubawi. She's got a nice Dubawi three-year-old with uh, Charlie Appleby and a two-year-old that Chibley Park bought here last year. That's one, one recently a couple of weeks ago. So the family's doing okay and she was just a bit of a queen really. She had a lovely big scopey mare, a lot of class, a lot of quality. I, I hoped that we'd have a good sale. I really loved the horses we brought here. They were lovely horses to look at with good pedigrees. I'm just so pleased for the guys who work so hard. We've got a team of 30 people on the, on the farm that work hard uh, to produce the foals and produce the weanlings and the yearlings. And they, they put all the effort in really, uh, led by Jerry Meehan. It's, it's a big deal for them. It really means a lot, so we're, we're thrilled. Stroud Coleman Bloodstock also added the second lot to make 1.2 million guineas on the day to their list of purchasers for the week in the form of the Baronstown stud consigned Galileo half-sister to Iverwood. The offering added to a tally of 36 yearlings for the sale's leading purchasers, who also secured lot 350 on the final day, a See the Stars colt out of a daughter of German champion El Danzig. The French premium qualified colt, who sold for 900,000 guineas, was consigned by Charles de Moussac's Ara de Mesere. Very pleased when you, are, when you sell a horse at this price, you know, it's, uh, you can be only pleased. And tell us a little bit about the, the story behind this horse and, and the family. So we bought the mare, the mare out of training for 350,000 euros in Deauville and, and then she had a colt by Lope de Vega that uh, was kept by, by, by the breeder. And this colt, uh, in the spring, it, it was not very uh, much forward. So when uh, Arcana came for, for the selection, they did not uh, take him. We gave him a lot of time. And uh, since August, the, the colt changed a lot when he took the sales preparation. And it's great. We, 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 we achieved uh, much more than we, we thought he was going to make. A lot of people uh, around here in, uh, in Tato Souls, international market. So, you know, if you have the right horse, uh, you, 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 you get a good price for him. Sheikh Hamdan's Shadwell stud also enjoyed a busy three days, signing for a total of 16 lots, including a Mion Valley stud consigned Invincible Spirit cult on the final day for 900,000 guineas. The cult, out of half-sister to Group 1 winner Izzy Top, held obvious appeal for the operation, who had to see off stiff competition for the well-bred cult. Pleased with that? Pay more than you thought you might have to, or about right? Uh, certainly paid more than I thought, Gina, because uh, he, quite an immature horse from a probably a late maturing family you never quite know how much you know how many people are going to be on those horses but uh, look he had a good pedigree he comes from a great farm um, and they had him looking fantastic he showed himself very well up here in the ring and obviously there were plenty of people keen to buy him a new record for turnover registered this week was achieved in large part thanks to the strong presence of some of the world's leading international purchasers it's a very busy week got here on Thursday started looking Friday and the stock are tremendous, the selection is fantastic. The best grass horses in the world, the best steins are here, the best female pedigrees are here and um, I mean the catalogue is very, very deep and uh, if you look at enough horses you're going to be able to find opportunities. Obviously it's very difficult to compete on the top 5-10% but underneath that there are a lot of nice horses that fit very well in the American grass racing program. In the last two days it's been very hard, you know. You've got all the big players here, you know, Dali and Colmore and everyone else, you know, we managed to go head to head with some of the horses, but you stick to the budget and, and you go from there. Well, the quality of horses are always good here and Tatasol sells good Galileo, Dobabi, the best stallions in the world. So, you know, if they can be a champion over here, why not? At the conclusion of another record-breaking sale, Tattersall's marketing director Jimmy George reflected on the week's trade. It's been another fairly extraordinary book one of the Tattersall's October yearling sale. I mean, looking back only 12 months, it, the book one sale in 2017 was 
unbelievably strong. Turnover went up from 88 million to 102 million. And genuinely, we thought it would be an awful long time before the sale managed to attain those sort of heights again. But this has been another record. It's 106 million in turnover for, for over the last three days. And uh, that's pretty extraordinary. It's the seventh consecutive year that book one of the October yearling sale has achieved record turnover. And as recently as 2011, the turnover was 51 million. So these are pretty staggering rises. It shows the sustained demand for the very best bloodstock out there. And that's what book one of the Tattersall's October yearling sale is all about. These are the best yearlings, the best turf bred yearlings to be found anywhere in the world. And it's great to see it striking a chord with buyers with a, with a bit of a new profile. American buyers buying significant numbers of yearlings at book one. That hasn't happened for, for quite a while. It, the process began last year. The turf programme in the States is getting bigger and stronger every year. And they're recognising that if you want a serious turf horse, Tattersalls is the place to come. The, the clearance rate is it's the best it's been for more than a decade, 85, 86%, which is fantastic. And I think part of that is the book one bonus factor. There are people coming to book one of the October yearling sale now enticed by the prospect of winning 30, 35, 40,000 pounds for winning their maiden, which you can't do if you go to any other yearling sale in Europe. So it's, it's brought in a sort of new dimension to the sale and, and added greater depth. The book one bonus has made it clear that there's something for everybody at this, at this sale and uh, it's added, a, as I say, a new dimension. What was extraordinary this year is the number of hugely significant catalogue updates for some all very all, already very well-bred uh, yearlings. And, and actually the two top lots are cases in point. So the Galileo Colt out of Shastai, his own brother Japan won the Group 2 Beresford a matter of days before the sale. It was already an extraordinarily strong pedigree, which just got even better. He made 3.4 million guineas, another great tribute to the Newsels Park team, who year after year bring in an unbelievable uh, team of yearlings to the sale. And the Watership Down Stud Colt, the, the Dubar we own brother to Tudan Hot and Lati Da. Since the catalogue was printed, obviously Lati Da was placed in a classic, and, and the the, the, the two-year-old brother went from being an unraced two-year-old in the catalogue page to, to an unbeaten Group 2 winner. So these things have huge significance. And uh, again, those both those farms, Warship Down and Newsels Park, are, are regulars at the top of the charts. And it was great to see it again this year.